Hello, my name is Nathan Radcliffe. I'm a cataract and glaucoma surgeon in New York City. I'm an associate professor of ophthalmology at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine, and I have a special interest in microinvasive glaucoma surgery. Let's take a look at the case for standalone MIGs. Despite the rapid and widespread adoption of MIGs, evidence suggests that they remain broadly underutilized. For example, in 2018, only 40,000 MIGS procedures were performed as standalone in patients with a glaucoma diagnosis. But there are many pseudophagic patients with glaucoma who did not undergo MIGS surgery at the time of their cataract surgery, wasn't available back then, and who could potentially benefit from MIGS at a later date. MIGS options for these pseudophagic patients are limited. Several MIGS procedures, including trabecular implants, are not covered by most payers as a standalone surgery, rendering them effectively unavailable for pseudophagic patients with glaucoma in whom MIGS surgery would be of value. The Omni surgical system is a relatively new addition to the MIGS armamentarium, and it's the only device that can be used to perform ab interno circumferential canaloplasty and trabeculotomy with a single handheld system. It can be performed as standalone procedure or in combination with cataract surgery. Omni, like the trabecular implants, treats the conventional outflow pathway but is differentiated in that it addresses outflow resistance at all three points in the pathway, including the trabecular meshwork, Schlem's canal, and the distal collector channels. One potential benefit to employing a MIGS procedure such as Omni may be a better quality of IOP reduction. Pharmaceutical IOP reduction is inherently variable, with fairly wide peaks and troughs for most agents shortly following and preceding dosing. Additionally, not all eye drops work well in the habitual nocturnal period. Recent published data from the Gemini study demonstrates the combined canaloplasty and trabeculotomy with the Omni reduced IOP fluctuations, in addition to lowering IOP out to 12 months postoperatively. Historically, the benefits of early surgery have not been sufficient to justify the early use of traditional procedures such as trabeculectomy or tube shunts. But the emergence of MIGS procedures has tipped the risk-benefit scale in favor of early surgery to afford benefits to patients who otherwise would not be considered appropriate surgical candidates. Having the ability to address patients with mild to moderate glaucoma through a minimally invasive procedure will dramatically affect how we can help glaucoma patients either during cataract surgery or patients who don't need cataract surgery but do have glaucoma.